you know, everything in our community is about how do we progress forward and how do we create things that will make it better for users. We now have a great user story that actually went through. They came up with a creative solution. Uh, let me introduce to you Mr. Masahiro Mayamoto from Yahoo Japan. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Masaharu Miyamoto, and I work for YG America. I have been researching new technologies and operating OCP industry at our data center for two years. Today, I'd like to talk about our experience with OCP for initial implementation, validation, and our impression after operating an OCP infrastructure for two years. First, I'd like to talk briefly about my company's background. YG America was established as a subsidiary company of Yahoo Japan three years ago. We have a small infrastructure engineer team at our data center in Washington state. Yahoo Japan is used by 80% of Japanese internet users. We provide over 100 services and earn 62 billion PV per month. Yahoo Japan operates over six data centers, one of which is located in Washington state, where I am based. We operate about 100,000 physical servers in total. These are some of YG America's OCP servers. This rack is used for Hadoop. We also have other OCP models for OpenStack and Kubernetes. But today, I'd like to talk mainly about the Hadoop model. These are some of Yahoo Japan's OCP servers. We use this type of rack configuration for OpenStack controller, KVM, and Ironic Bare Metal. Now, I'd like to talk briefly about why we chose to have a data center in the US rather than in Japan. The main reason is electricity. The electricity situation is very different between the US and Japan. The electricity cost makes up about 26% of Yahoo Japan internal data center total cost. The other 74% is for equipment and operating costs such as servers and network equipment and human resources. It is difficult to dramatically reduce the, this 74% cost. Also, electricity rates in Japan are continuing to increase. The lighter color is indicates lower electricity cost. Our data center is located in the white area. <laughs> <laughs> electricity price in the US are one sixth of the cost in Japan. This difference could reduce the total data center cost by 22%. This is a big deal. After deciding our new data center location, we had to find our architecture design. There are many choices when determining architecture design today, almost too many. What did we consider in determining YG America's architecture design? First, we only have three engineers at our data center one director, one network engineer, and uh, one server engineer, me. And next, <laughs> our infrastructure is growing. We have over five data centers in Japan. At the same time, technology is changing very rapidly. We had to research rapidly changing new technologies in a short amount of time. 
Of course, the infrastructure design must also be stable and reliable. Also, we had no prior experience working in the U.S. It is difficult, starting from zero, to build a large infrastructure system like Google or Facebook in a short amount of time. The U.S. was new to us, so we faced many challenges initially. For these reasons, we decided to focus on hyperscale architecture. Now, I will explain how the hyperscale architecture design has helped us. Hyperscale architecture is simple because the concept is based on scaling out our standard configuration. We thought this model would be relatively easy to introduce into our data center. Also, hyperscale architecture engineers will be more eager to promote their technologies if they are open to the public. You are able to get advice from many people who are very knowledgeable about their technologies. Other hyperscale data centers have many years of actual experience supporting their various services. Many potential issues are already resolved because these data centers have been in operation for years. One of the OCP servers in our data center is running Hadoop. What model of OCP design did we decide to introduce in the end? Because Facebook is already running one of the largest scale servers in the world, we decided to model our Hadoop system after the Facebook Hadoop OCP model. They are also available to the public. Because OCP was a new technology for us, so we learned Hadoop on OCP and on traditional vendor models uh, and, and on OCP model, uh, we had fewer hardware issues with OCP than with traditional models. So far, I've talked mainly about the merits of open and simple hyperscale architecture design. Now, I'd like to talk about how OCP model has changed our operation. As I mentioned earlier, we only have three infrastructure engineers on site. Each engineer is responsible for a different field. As you know, the OCP is designed from the user's, user's perspective. Actually, the most com uh, common operational errors at data center are power cabling mistakes. This is a very significant change for our operation. Since implementing OCP design almost two years ago, we have had zero operational errors. We began running our first data center in Washington State about three years ago. The building's electric design is older and has limited power. Centralized power shift design provides a high efficiency power supply. On the business side, in the beginning, we had few vendor contacts, which resulted in less competition and higher prices. For OCP servers, we can negotiate directly with the individual parts manufacturers, which gives us more choices at lower cost. Also, because we stock common parts, inventory is more manageable, and we can avoid supply disruption risk. Now, I'd like to talk briefly about the cons of OCP. Test periods tend to be long, and sometimes you can have long delivery time for parts. Also, high volume orders are 
sometimes required to compensate for the server assembly cost and parts procurement. So we would like to drive a scheduled joint procurement with other companies like us. During my research on OCP, I came across this phrase, 80% of the service parts are designed to be easily replaced in three minutes. So we test it. <laughs> we calculated the average time it took two different operators to replace the main parts on the server. Now, I'd like to show you a video of one of these tests. Let me show you the video. This is our data center. This is a video of me replacing one DIM of an OCP server. Now, unplug the cables. And unlock the server. The cover can be removed without using any tools. Replace the dim. As you can see, it's very easy. No tools were needed to change the dim. Let me fast forward a little here. <laughs> like the server and the products the cables in. <laughs> so here is the result. When replacing a NIC in this particular model, more parts have to be removed to access the NIC. The CPU's heat sink is attached to the motherboard with a screw, so it must be removed. For this test, we were able to replace not 80%, but 100% of the parts in under three minutes. Like. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to talk about our approach for adapting OCP. Our challenge is, what if I want to use OCP, but I only have 19-inch locks? I am excited to share where, uh, what uh, we've come up as a solution. The silver bracket installed in this 19-inch lock makes it possible to use with OCP servers. This is designed for use with OpenLAC v2 system and can hold up to 32 OCP servers. Many collocation centers still have non-replaceable 19-inch locks, so we found it valuable to us and believe it will be of value to the OCP community as well. The bracket includes a bus bar. 21-inch lock can hold three servers per shelf, and 19-inch lock can hold two servers per shelf. We haven't shared this with the OCP lock and power committee yet, but we haven't have spoke with the project lead and look forward to sharing more about our solution with the OCP community. These are the companies currently working on this. We are always looking for more collaborators and users. In conclusion, by using the OCP hyperscale model, you can focus on non-hardware issues. Also, OCP can reduce your maintenance time. And the best part of all is that OCP members are always eager to help users achieve their goals for freedom. Thank you for your attention.